actually before I retired, I was uh, invited to be on the Institutional Review Board of the hospital here. And I was on that for about 20 years as a volunteer. And then I finally, I retired from that maybe last year. But I was also on the uh, board of the uh, scholarship and welfare fund at Hunter College. And I ran one committee that had we, we had to do with giving graduate grants. And we interviewed students for that, graduating seniors who were going on to graduate school. And we would give them a little leg up to, so that they, you know, as I told them, you, if you needed to buy a winter coat, that's okay. If you needed it for tuition, that's okay too. Whatever you need it for, it's okay. It's not much, but it's, at least it helps. And so I was on that, I'm still on that board. I'm not chairing the committee anymore. I told them that I was too old to do that. <clears throat> but I do interview two or three groups of students each session. So I try to keep involved. And, uh, and you continue to travel? Uh, what? Can you continue to travel? I continue to travel. This last summer, I had my 90th birthday, and when my son called me from Santa Fe and wanted to know if I wanted a party, I said, no way. And he said, okay, you know, he agreed. He wouldn't have wanted one either. And then I had been invited by a very good friend for many who have been a friend for more than 50 years, to her place in uh, sort of on the edges of Provence and the French Riviera. And I said, oh, that sounded like a good idea. And I thought, I'll go there. And then I called. I had a French friend who lived in Paris normally but had a place in Antibes. And I said, Anne, I'm coming to the French Revel R Riviera for my 90th birthday. Would you like to have me? Oh, she was delighted that I was going to come and stay with her. Because I stayed with her in Paris many times. And she stayed with me and her children and her grandchildren. All were good friends. We were, we were family. And so I went to the Riviera. And I stayed for several days in Antibes with Anne. And we did sightseeing like crazy. I'd been there before, but you know, there's always something to see. And the Picasso Museum had reopened and all sorts of things. And that was fun. And then I went over to Margie Biren's place, which was in saint vallier de thiers And she had, she lived in a community of people who lived in Cambridge, and there was the former head of the, the cardiovascular surgery in Cambridge, the former head of the uh, neuro, n neurosurgery, also in Cambridge. And since Margie had a place in Cambridge as well, they all came to the same area in Saint Vallier for August. And so that's where I went for the second half of my vacation and had all these Cambridge big shots who were really terrific people. And it was the most informal group. And we were all on a first name basis. I didn't know their last names. And one of the the men who came was Derek somebody. And it turns out Derek was the general in charge of the Gurkhas during World War II. <clears throat> and I thought, oh my God, if they 
if I have to sit next to him, what am I going to talk to a general about? Well, it turns out the first thing he said to me was that his favorite writer was Alan Bennett. Well, it just so happens that I have a subscription to the London Review of Books that my son sends me for Christmas every year. And Alan Bennett writes for them frequently. And of course, I knew him from Beyond the Fringe and all the other things that he did. So we hit it off very nicely. We had a lot to talk to each other about, in spite of the fact that he was a general. And he was actually hopeful that things might be better than we all hoped for with Trump because uh, he knew Mattis very well. And, you know, they were generals together in the war. And he said, and he didn't think Mattis would let Trump get away with anything. It's good to know. <laughs> well, it was encouraging. Actually, I think Mattis tries to calm Trump, Trump down, but who can Trump that? So any plans for the... <clears throat> Not at the moment. I don't like to make them too far in advance because at age 90, you never know what's going to happen. At the moment, I still do my volunteer work at Hunter, and I still come here for meetings and things. And I have a lot of friends, and I enjoy what I'm doing. And as long as I can take care of myself, I'm perfectly willing to to continue. This I just don't want to be trailed by some poor little lady who has to follow me around. Or I don't want that to happen. If it happens, I'd rather go. And I have that all written in my will and my, my living will and my health care proxy. It's all, it's all down there in writing. <laughs>